to you are more than enough. And your mercy endures forever. So we just give you praise on today. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for our sins, Lord.
God again. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to our people online. We are so grateful that you joined us here at Revision Church Atlanta. Welcome to this worship, this live experience. Uh, you've got uh, close to maybe 100 people here and the rest of you thousands around the world joining us. It's good to see you. How are you feeling today, baby? Oh, I'm tired, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, somebody, tell the whole truth. It's been a long week. Come on, somebody. I know yeah. I'm not alone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but he brought us through. That's right. That's oh, right. Oh, I just need a little more Jesus, and I'll be all right. How about you? Now, I, I thought that you would say you feel you're tired, but you feel good because it's a special weekend. Yes. Yes, yes, it is. And I, I'm no ways tired. All right. By his grace. I'm speaking prophetically it's now. It's our uh, anniversary weekend. 22 yes. years. To 22 God years. be the glory. Come on, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that in the chat. Come on. Jesus did it. That's right. Jesus did it. God is good. We're grateful that you're here. We're grateful we're celebrating 22 yes. years of matrimony. And today, as you are watching, especially if this is your first time, we want to uh, shout you out if you would just say where you are watching from. And if you're a regular watcher, a regular worshiper with us, please just say in the live chat there on Facebook and on YouTube, just let us say good morning and where you're watching from, all right? Yes. If you're here in the live audience, if you want to get on, in on it, just grab yeah, your phones. Yeah, go on YouTube. Remember to keep it on silent, all right? And just go on, on there and see what's happening in the chat. We're going to say good morning. Well, good morning, Solomon. Good morning, Solomon. Good to see you this from morning. Mexico. All right, good yes, stuff. Yes, welcome back. All right, who else do we have? Who yes, else do we have? This morning. Just remember to say good morning. Let us know where you are watching from so we can shout you out this morning. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have anybody here from Mexico, but we do have somebody here who came back from Puerto Rico. <laughs> A couple of days, I'm not going to call you not out. I'm going to call right. them out. Yes, Tanisha, Tanisha, welcome from Tokyo. All right, welcome back. Thank yes, you for being with us. Yes, we are us. so glad you tune in weekly. That's right. Annette Dickens again from South Carolina. Yes, welcome. Welcome, good morning. And Annette, I should let you all know, she organized in her area as we were passing oh, out yes. to our neighbors last week and serving our neighbors in downtown Atlanta. She organized a group there in South Carolina to do the same thing. Come on, let's praise God for yes, them. Yes, serving all over. Thank you, Wonderful. Annette. Wonderful. You're probably not the only person who's done that, so we're grateful for that. Yes. Ay Ayanda Fantastic from Joburg. All right, South we, Africa. We love our people in South Africa. Matter of fact, my pants are from South Africa, so I know. That's right. That's I right. know we are on one accord this morning. That's right. That's good right. Good morning and good South afternoon Africa to you. South Africa is represented in the yes. building. Yes. All right, <laughs> Joyce, Joyce Shoemaker, good morning. From, from Illinois. Illinois, Illinois, all right. I want to know if it's cold there. It's cold, it's cold. Oh. It's always cold this time of Let year. Let me tell you about Atlanta. We don't know what the season is. Yeah, yeah. Come on, y'all. Can it just get cold and stay cold? They can tell me if they want to. There's no climate change. All mm. right. <laughs> we living it right here in hot Atlanta. That's right. All right. Lisa Madu, welcome back. From, from Spain. Spain. From Spain. Welcome. All right, y'all. People watching from around the world. Claude. All right. Come on, y'all showing off today. From Oslo, Norway. Norway, welcome. Right. I don't, we can't say good morning there. I don't know what time well, it is. Well, we don't know what time it is. All we right. just want to say hello. Hello, hello, hello. I'm glad you joined us. Michael Drummond from Tallahassee. <laughs> That's our Drummond family there. That's How y'all right. doing? Let's see what he said. How's what he my said? good buddy, Stephanie? Tell him I am doing very well. Good to see you. Love to you and your wife. All right, all right. Good to see y'all. All right, a few more, a few more. All right, Christine and Michael, good morning. Yes, good morning. Great members of our church. Yes. All right, who else says good morning? All right, great to have you. Well, every time that we gather together, we like to do something interactive particularly for those in our online audience. But you, with your phones in the live audience, can also participate. Stephanie has an interactive question today. Yes. The question of the day is, what do you lose most often? Tell the truth. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you lose most often? Lord have mercy. What do you what lose? What do you lose most often? Well, I'm going to turn it around to you. No, in fact, no, no. I'd like to answer for you if I could. Yes. Usually, it's not a good thing in marriage to answer for your spouse. But. But I know if that question, you turn that around to you, okay. you lose your phone about three times a day. But I think we need to clarify. Okay. Is there a difference between losing and misplacing? <laughs> come on, somebody. Come I, on, see, come on. I see several ladies in agreement. <laughs> I misplace my phone several times a day. 
I don't lose it. Okay. Because if I go back to the washer and dryer area, I'm, I'm bound to find it there on top of the dryer. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. What do you lose more, most often? Most often, I'd probably say my keys. But we have a key dish. Yes. <laughs> and I don't always put it where it's supposed okay, to be. Okay, all, all, right, right. all right, all right. What all right, do so you all lose most often? What do you lose often? most often? Put it in the chat. Even if you're here, Amber, put it in the chat. Amber, your chapstick. Amber's Tell here. Get to see you. something to that. Your chapstick, yes, yes. Well, you have a friend over here because he just I, asked me for chapstick. Yeah, yeah. I can had I, can to I tell y'all what she did? So I asked her, I said, baby, when you wear, when I wear these masks, you're about to be online. You know, my lips are going to be dry. We don't want it that. makes my lips dry. We don't want it. She said, oh, baby, I, I got the fix. She took off her mask. She said, just kiss me. That's right. Come on, somebody. I moisten those lips right quick. And Y'all didn't even know. You'll get some of that lip gloss. That's so right. I didn't give them a lot, just a little bit to help them along this way. So if my lips are shimmering All today, right. That's right. you know I didn't he put didn't it on. He ain't had no chicken. It's just his wife. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, Elaine says she's losing her glasses. Elaine, glasses. All right. All right, that's Samantha Howard. All right. My God, my mind. She said, My mind. (laughs) God restores. That's the song that comes to my mind. My mind. I I hear you. I hear you. Savvy Feminist from the UK says, My phone. All right. Yes, those phones have feet. Audrey, what's up, Audrey? She says, Sleep. Yeah. Sleep. I need, I can't get enough of that. Sleep. All right. Shay says, Keys. What's up, Toronto family? All right, G. Oh, hey, J. S. My yeah. wallet. Oh, Come yeah. on, you can't forget that. Oh, yeah. I guess Amber has her purse, so she'll make sure she can cover the charger. That's right. That's good. Dr. Court, your wife. Oh, you lose your <laughs> wife and your phone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Sam. You let's talk. Let's Come talk on after now. the service. You ain't had it that long. You can't <laughs> lose it yet. That's right. You ain't had it long. All right, Adrian, oh, your memory. Lord have mercy. You too young, Adrian, to be losing your memory. Come you, on. You way too young. <laughs> Brent, what's up? The current mask <laughs> I'm wearing? <laughs> We're glad you found it. Yeah, keep your mask on. Nadine, what's up? Hey, lady. What's up? Your Bluetooth. Your Bluetooth. Oh, so your Bluetooth drops? You miss, you miss your Bluetooth? No, or it could be your AirPods. I don't know. Which uh, one should you I, I don't know. I don't Bluetooth. know. But I'm glad y'all watching. What's up, Danny? Yeah, good morning. All the way from sunny California. Yes. Barbara says, your focus. That'll happen, too. Come on, that'll happen. I won't ask her her age, but it does happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, you said oh, no. Oh, he said my wife oh, okay. loses. Hey, y'all, Samuel, clarify. Thank you, Doc. Yeah, we know he, he says, didn't lose my his wife phone. loses her phone. Yeah. He didn't say I'm losing well, my wife well, How about this, though, Court? <laughs> what are you losing? You speaking for your wife. I want to know. <laughs> I want you to be honest about what's happening in your life. Kay, Hutch. Oh, this is Terry. Yes. And Camille. All right. Hello, family. Your AirPods. What's up? Yes, those AirPods. All right, family. We miss y'all. One or two more. All okay. right. All right. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Okay. One more. Georgia Davis says. Lord have mercy. Her retainers. Retainers. Ooh, you got to keep that. That's kind of personal. Yeah, yeah. you got to keep it close And by. expensive. <laughs> yeah, so and if it has some teeth in there, it's important. <laughs> you know it's Lord situation. have mercy. All right, good morning. Don't y'all think Stephanie needs her own radio show or a podcast? Yeah, yeah, she needs I'm doing podcast. too much up here, hon, <laughs> for the service. <laughs> it's all right. All right, well, we're grateful. We're grateful that you guys participated. We like to have fun um, as we have worship. Y'all know you can laugh and praise Jesus at the same time. Amen, yes, somebody? God. Amen, amen. And as you are joining us for this worship experience, even those in the building and those online, we are so grateful that you are here. In fact, in fact, we have a special guest with us that wants to bring us some greetings from our conference. Yes, for those of you who wonder, is Revision part of the conference? Absolutely. We're part yes. of a sisterhood of churches, Georgia, yes. Co- Georgia Cumberland yes. Conference, Liberate. and Dr. Neil Reed is here. He has been a great friend of Revision, a great supporter. I literally would not be here literally. if it would not, if it were not for him. Let's put our hands together for <laughs> Dr. Reed. Come on, Doc. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Revision. This is the day the Lord has made. Let yes. us do what? Rejoice. Rejoice and be glad. And be glad. It's great to be here. Uh, Dr. Knight, it's such a joy to come and see you in person. It's been almost two years, right? Yes. yes. And Minister Stephanie, likewise. Yes. I must tell you that my wife and I, Laurel, who's here with me, yes. we tune in regularly Amen. to see what's going on at Revision. And if we don't hear her in the background, the pastor's not preaching. <laughs> He's just going through the motions. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And, and we know when she's not there because she's quiet. That's right, that's right. See? But on behalf of Georgia Cumberland Conference, I want to express appreciation, Pastor, to you, to your dear wife, 
and to the supporters of this great ministry. Amen. You have done something that no other church in Atlanta in our conference is doing. You're transforming the lives of individuals, many of whom would not even be in church today. Would not even be watching yes. online. Yes. And the last time I checked, the church is a house of prayer for all people. All people. And we're glad that all people are represented, not only here in the building, but also online. Yes. I just also want to make mention of, uh, well, a few years ago, about 20 years ago, I was pastoring a little church in Rochester, New York, Breath of Life Church. And there was a lady there, a great prayer warrior and a deacon who had a son. And I'm surprised to see that that son is your assistant pastor, Pastor Jordan. Where is he? <laughs> Wonderful. Amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together for Pastor Houston. And I must tell you, you know, there are some kids when you see them, yeah, hi, they look like they, they were born with a purpose. Yes. He was one of those guys. Pastor, it's good to see you. Carry on. By the way, I just want to mention this. I see that your mission is to reintroduce people to 10,000 people. It seems to me that from the time you mentioned that, you had accomplished your mission. Yeah. So I think you need to move to 100,000 by the grace of God. God bless you. We're here to worship. Carry on. And let God's will be done in your life and in your ministry. Thank, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Let's put our hands together for this great minister of God. I praise God for him. He is indeed such a blessing. Thank you, Sister Reed, for coming and being with us. Come on, let's put our hands together for her. They do ministry together. She stood by him in ministry for so many years. And we, we are so grateful for both of you and your anointing and your covering over us today. Well, as we continue to worship... We want to invite you to join us in prayer now um, as we intercede for each other. You can drop now even in the chat some things you need people to pray for, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Would you just drop that in the chat now? Because there's power when we pray for each other. Right now, our First Lady Stephanie's going to pray for us, but I want you, as you see prayer requests being dropped in the chat, they're on Facebook and on YouTube, to pray for those individuals as we now pray for you and cover you in prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. We thank you, Lord, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive the mercy that we are in need of. Your word tells us to be anxious for nothing. You didn't just say that because we don't need to be worried or we don't need to grumble or complain. You said that because you are an all-sufficient God, uh, an omniscient God. Uh, you're sovereign this morning. You were sovereign yesterday, and you'll be sovereign tomorrow. Thank you, God, for being able to do what we cannot do for ourselves. May we rest in you. May we lean not to our own understanding, but acknowledge you in all of our ways and have full faith that you will direct our paths, that you will shed light where we need it, that you will tell us which way to go and which way not to go. You will tell us when to move and when to be still. You will be the lifter of our heads. You will show us the way that you have planned. You will order our steps in your word. Oh God, we only gather because we believe there is a God. Oh, we don't do this because of form of fashion. We do it because we need you. And we desire more of the power that Jesus had in our lives today. Lord, help us not to be anemic Christians, but help us to be fully healthy in you. May we be robust in your word and in your will. And may we live a life that is pleasing to you and to those who are struggling today, struggling in their mind, struggling in their spirit or their body. I ask in the name of Jesus that you will be their help right now in the name of Jesus. Your spirit will touch them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Lord, there's some people in here who believe that you can do it, but for those who don't, show yourself strong. Resurrect somebody spiritually. Take somebody off of their bed of affliction right now. They might be looking online and they feel
feel their help coming right now because you can be everywhere and you can do everything. You are God and there's none like you. So be God in our lives. Show up in a big and real way. Show out so a dying world, a hurting world can know there's hope. There's hope in you, God. Thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. And we trust you to do what only God can do. And that's come through for his people because he loves us with an everlasting love. And for that, we are ever grateful. In the mighty name of Jesus and for his sake, amen and amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and praise God today. Right there in the chat, put your hands together. Right there at home, lift those hands. Hallelujah. We praise God today. Hallelujah. He's here in the building. He's there in your house. He's there in your car. He's there wherever you are. We're about to worship. As the praise team comes to lead us, let's give God our very best praise. And then I'll be back to bring us the word today. I'm excited about what God is going to do. Let's continue to worship. invite your spirit. I just feel your spirit here. We want your spirit to break out. Break out like never before. We've been through 2020. We've been through 2021. We're about to enter 2022. We just need your spirit. We just need that Holy Spirit to talk to us, to guide us, to be with us.
some glory right now. Praise the name above all names. The name above all names. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name is Jesus. What a beautiful name. I know right now it's end of the year and there's so much going on in the world. There's so much going on in your homes. There's so much going on at work, school, in your relationships. But there's a name that can fix all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, see, it sounds cliche. It sounds like we just talking because we're here in church. But when you call on the name of Jesus, there's just something about Jesus. Jesus. by the name of Jesus. Situations are changed by the name of Jesus. Your mindset shifting by the name of Jesus. You getting to a place safely by the name of Jesus. You stepping into what God has for you in the name of Jesus. Hey. Oh. I give you glory, God. We give you praise, Lord. Death cannot hold you. The veil tore before you. You silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. Now you are raised to life again. Yes, 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 Lord.
unrivaled. You have no equal. Now you are God and forever you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Now you are alive. You will forever reign. I invite you right now, Holy Spirit. I invite you right now, Holy Spirit. Soften the ground for the word, Father. Soften the ground for the word. I feel that there's a word today. There's a word coming forth today. Forget about the music. Forget about the singing. There's a word coming today. And that's what we came here to get, the word of God. So as we enter in 2022, we're entering to what God has for us. Not what we want. Not what we think we need, but what God has for us. We just thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to worship on today. We just give you all the glory. What a beautiful name. We're going to do that one more time.
shown us even in this holy moment as we gather. And we're grateful for the opportunity we have to collectively praise his name today. We wish those of you online could be with us here, but of course, because of the pandemic, we limit our numbers. But God will not be limited in what he's about to do through this word. I want to thank our praise team. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Kenneth, for leading today. It's your first time leading live, and we love you, my brother. We appreciate you. And for the praise team and for our, off, our awesome band and instrumentalists, we praise God for playing skillfully and with anointing today. I might be so through by the time we're done that I won't get a chance to say it, but I want to thank all of our volunteers who help with registration, all of our security team, our men and women in blue who are keeping our, us safe today, our media team, and communications. Shout out to Courtney for uh, creating that. We fancy now. We got that QR code for you to do offering and everything like that. Thank you, Courtney and her team. To all of you who make this possible, we are grateful for all of you. And as your pastor, I want to say that I indeed appreciate you and I love you. I, somebody asked me today, uh, not today, this week, a pastor asked me, <laughs> um, he said, uh, man, uh, how, how long are you going to stay at Revision? This is what he asked me, Dr. Reed. He said, how, lo how long are you going to stay there? Because he, he knew I received a couple calls the last few weeks to go different places. And, uh, and, I, and I turned them down immediately. <laughs> um, and so he said, well, man, you know, I know you got these other calls. You turned them down. How long are you going to stay? I said, as long as the Lord allows, I want to be here. I'm planning. I'm planning for a long time. I, I might as well say this while the conference representative is here. Amen. I'm planning to be here a long time. Amen. God bless you. Yeah, 10, 15, 20, come on, let's, let's do it. Uh, and I just told him, because I love Revision Church, there is no church like this. Next year, I think, will be 25 years of pastoral ministry that I'll celebrate. And I can tell you that this has been the most enjoyable ride. So I'm grateful for all of you. There is a word from the Lord today. I must admit to you, um, last time I was here, it, it's a struggle to preach kind of like hybrid like this. So I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning, Papa, um, how to do this. Cause you know, for the last, since March of last year, I've been preaching straight to a camera with an audience of sometimes only one, maybe two. Um, so to try to share both here, cause we don't want to lose the majority of people who are online and then preach to you who are here. So y'all pray for me. Y'all gonna pray for me today? Now let me tell you about this. This word is gonna get in your business. I'm, 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 coming, for, I'm coming for you today. In the name of Jesus. Uh, I hope you're ready and open to hear it. it th there is oftentimes profundity in simplicity. And I wanna be as simple and uh, trust the Holy Spirit to make this a profound transformation in your life. Isaiah chapter 42. For those of you who are at home, for those of you in the building, grab your devices. If you're old school, grab your leather-bound Bible if you brought it. Isaiah chapter 42. I'm going to preach verses 5 through 10. I'm going to read, as I usually do, from the English Standard Version. You can read along silently as I read audibly. Isaiah 42, 5 through 10. And this is the word of the Lord. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And, and I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations. 
to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Verse 9, behold, the former things have come to pass. Hang out here. And new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. For Samonic Spotlight, I want you to focus on verse 9 and 10. Behold, the former things have come to pass. And now, new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song. Today, let's go to God's word as we look at this message entitled, Not This Song Again. Father, have your way. Speak to your children. May we hear a word in due season. We thank you for what you're about to do. We thank you for the ways you're about to make. We thank you, God, for the transformation you will bring. In Jesus' name, let everybody at home and in the building say amen. This is the time of the year for Christmas songs. In department stores, at Lowe's, in gas stations, and on all radio stations, all you hear are Christmas songs. And everybody's got their favorite Christmas songs that gets them into the mood for Christmas. In fact, those of you who are watching online, just drop in the chat your favorite Christmas song. That's right, drop it right now, Jingle Bells. I think there's one called Silver Bells. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Blue Christmas, Santa Baby, All I Want for Christmas. Drop it in, your, in the chat, your favorite Christmas song. Once some of you right now are thinking about it, you can hear the melody in your head. This is the time of the year for Christmas songs, and I hate all of them. <laughs> okay, not, not, not all of them, not all of them. There, there are some, like Joy to the World, Rooted in Scripture, Jesus, the Light of the World. I like those ones. But I got to be honest. I, I hate most Christmas songs. It's not that I have the spirit of Scrooge. It's not that I'm anti-Christmas. It's not rooted in any kind of theological understanding, Dr. Reed. I, I, I just don't like Christmas songs. And I hate most of the Christmas songs because I don't think, stay with me today because I'm going somewhere, I, I don't think we know what we are singing when we sing most of these Christmas songs. Now, I done offended about 500 people online, but, but, but stay with me. Uh, I mean, the reason I hate it is not, not just because of the corny melodies and, and um, the, the corny jingle bell sounds in the background, and, but, but, but the real reason I don't like most Christmas songs is because I don't think, we understand what half of these songs are saying. Let, let, let me tell you what I mean. So take, for instance, the Christmas song. It's literally called the Christmas song, popularized by the golden voice of Nat King Cole. The opening line of the song is problematic. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. When's the last time you ate or roasted a chestnut? In fact, most of y'all don't even know what chestnuts look like. And you certainly don't know what they taste like. And when we come to Christmas, we like to eat delicious meals, right? I actually did some research, found out that Libby O'Connell 
a historian, a food historian who wrote the book, The American Plate. She talks about that if you go to the store and buy roasted peeled chestnuts, you will discover they are not delicious at all. So why are we singing about roasted chestnuts? Here's another one. Here's another Christmas song we sing that to me, I don't think we understand what it's saying. It's arguably the most depressing Christmas song of all time. Yet it's ironically called, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Do you know the original lyrics of that song? It says, have yourself a merry little Christmas. It may be your last. Next year, we may all be living in the past. Those are the original lyrics. Then some brilliant person said, let me spruce it up a little bit and changed it through. Through the years, we all will be together if the fates allow. That's... That's not happy. Here's another one. Winter Wonderland. This song is just plain weird. H have you ever read the lyrics? Because you sing it, but you don't read the lyrics. There is a lyric in here that is bewildering. It says, and pretend that he is Parson Brown. Who's Parson Brown? Then it says, he'll say, are you married? We say no, man. But you can do the job when you're in town. You, you didn't pay attention to the lyrics, right? That might be an invitation for something a little sneaky, a little shady. You can do the job when you're down. <laughs> not, not to mention, Baby, It's Cold Outside, which is a song about pressuring women to sleep with you while you slip something in their drinks. Or 12 Days of Christmas includes hedonism, capitalism and materialism at its best. Do we understand what we are singing when we sing these songs? Here's my point. Here's my point. Mark Batterson, uh, a famous writer who wrote The Prayer Circle, shared on a podcast this week about habit forming. He mentioned a Duke University study that said 45% of behavior is habitual. That is, that is something that we do sometimes without even thinking. Stay with me today. And while that is not inherently dangerous to have a habit, I want you to lean in to this. He said, when something becomes second nature... We don't give it a second thought. An important scientific note, did you know this? After hearing a song 30 times, you no longer pay attention to the lyrics, even though you're saying them. Mm, Holy Ghost helped them to get this today. After hearing it, after singing it for 30 times, you don't pay attention to the lyrics. You just say it. And if you sing it long enough, you don't even think about it. Because the danger is unconscientious singing based on hearing something too many times. It's Christmas. It's Christmas season. And the problem, the danger inherent in Christmas is we might do it so many times that we miss the potency and the importance of this time. We read the stories and we don't even think about it. We go to Christmas programs and we don't even think about it. We sing the carols and we don't even think about what we're saying because it's the same old song and the same old words. And that's why whenever Christmas comes around, my family will tell you, they call me Scrooge. But when it comes on the radio and it starts playing Jingle Bells, I say, no, not that song again because I don't think we're listening to the words. It becomes something that is not really meaningful. And I think... That the temptation of this season is that the power of Christmas will be lost on us because it comes around every year. Christmas has lost its meaning, not simply because it's so commercial, but because it's annual. It's lost its significance, not because it's capitalistic, but because it's so common. 
Every year we sing the same songs, we read the same nativity stories and rehearse the same ideas. And when you do something over and over, stay with me today, you can begin to stop thinking about it and it becomes mechanical rather than transformational. I just said something. This is when Christmas becomes, Christmas becomes rote, R-O-T-E. And there is a problem when things become rote. Not routine, but rote. There is a difference, if you're taking notes, there is a difference between something becoming rote and something becoming routine. When something is rote, R-O-T-E, by definition, it's the use of, of doing something by memory, watch this, with little to no intelligence. That's Webster's Dictionary definition. It is mechanical. It is unthinking. Watch this. It is a joyless sense of order. Oh, God, help them to hold on till I get there. It, when something is rote, you do it without thinking. When something is rote, you do it because you have to. When something is rote, there is no passion. There is no desire. It's just something that you do that's rote. But routine is an established procedure full of value and meaning. Our problem is not the routine of Christmas. Because routines are created by a stream of habits that connect us to meaning and value. Routines are important because routines help people stay grounded. Routines help people to sustain uh, their, their footing. Without a routine, you'd always be late for work. Without a routine, you would never get enough sleep and be able to operate optimally at your job. We need routines in our lives so that we have an established way of doing certain things. Christmas has certain routines, doesn't it? And nothing wrong with the routines. Some of y'all bake cookies. Some of you wrapping presents, cooking Christmas dinner, hosting family members from out of town. These are things we do every year. These are things we do every Christmas. They are part of our annual rhythms and practice. The problem is not the routine. The problem comes when the routine becomes rote. When it becomes rote, then mentioning baby Jesus becomes mechanical. When it becomes rote, you can say the name of Jesus, Kenneth, and not be changed by it. When it becomes rote, you can actually sing on a praise team and not have worshipped all week long. When it becomes rote, Christmas becomes monotonous instead of momentous. And I think that my problem with Christmas songs is that they have become rote. When something becomes rote, you don't have to think about it. You just put up the tree. You just sing the carols. You just serve the dinner. I'm coming around the mountain. You just read the story of baby Jesus, and you don't ever think about it. Now, when it comes to worship, could it be? that our worship routine has become rote. As we approach the new year, there is a push and a pressure to get back to church. By this we mean we need to get back into the building to have church. For those of us who are believers in Jesus, we see the value of this routine of gathering in corporate worship. There is a value in having people in the same place praising the same God. People in the same place singing the same songs. And although we may not all be singing on the same key, help us Jesus, at least we're singing together. There is a value in having people in the same place praying to the same God, accessing the same throne. And if we are honest, there is a pressure to get back to gathering for our weekly worship because for many of us, it is part of a healthy spiritual routine. And just like a physical exercise routine helps to keep the pounds off, hello somebody, and a mental health routine of self-care helps you to manage your stress, so a spiritual routine that includes corporate worship helps you to grow in your faith and sense that you are part of a community, that you're not out here by yourself, and if he can make it and she can make it, then you can make it. So the pressure is on. 
to get back in the building, to get back in the sanctuary, to get back to what we used to do. But here's the danger. Some of you want to get back not to the routine of worship, but to rote worship. I just said something. I'm going to let you write it down, those of you taking notes. The push is not necessarily to get back into the building. The push is to get back to normal. The push is not to just get back to the seats. The push is for you to get back to feeling the way you felt when you simply sat there and received but didn't come to give. Save me a seat. I'm going to sit right down beside you today. Um, the, 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 the temptation is, is you don't want to just get back in the four walls. You want to get back into the safety of anonymity amongst the crowd where you don't have to push personal worship up from your spirit. You just get to lean on other people singing his praises. Mm, okay, okay. Worship routines are what help people to stay grounded in their faith. And you need to have a worship routine. Don't get me wrong. Routines have got a bad rep. It's good to have a worship routine. Without a worship routine, you will begin to feel spiritually off kilter. Without a worship routine, you will always see problems instead of opportunities. Without a worship routine, your sense of purpose, hear this, is outsourced to the opinions of people who don't even care about you. Without a worship routine, your insecurities can be exploited by people who don't understand your gifting. And without a worship routine, you become biblically illiterate and thus spiritually impotent. You better preach this, Holy Ghost. They might not be listening, but I hear you speaking. We need worship in our lives. Do I have a witness in the building? So that we have an established way of hearing God. Being with God, living with God. Part of our spiritual worship routine is coming together for worship. Our church worship has certain routines that we do. We always sing. We always pray. We listen to a sermon. We give our offerings and our tithes. We stand up and talk to people. Before COVID, these were things we used to do every week, or at least some of y'all. Before COVID, these were things many of us did regularly. Before COVID, this was a part of our weekly rhythm and practice. Nothing is wrong with the routine, but the problem is when the routine becomes rote. May I kindly, but yet frankly, suggest to you today that too many of you gathered for worship pre-COVID, but were not engaging in a worship routine because your worship became rote. You sang words to songs you never thought about. You listen to sermons, I'm gonna get in your business right here, and, 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 and you, you, you listen to sermons and yet you stop thinking about the message in the moment or by the time you got to the parking lot. You thoughtlessly read your Bible plan on your Bible app in order to check it off, but there's been no transformation in your spirit. You were in God's presence. I'm going to keep going until I get to you. You were in God's presence even on the Lord's day and you weren't moved by anything the praise team sang because if you didn't read anything that week, there was nothing in you to connect to what was coming out of them. You sing words without knowing. You sing praises without feeling. That's why the preacher has to work so hard to get you to say amen, to look like you're awake, to look like you're alert because there's been no deposits all week. And could it be our problem is we're trying to get back to normal when God is saying, I don't want my church to go back to normal. I'm not trying to get you back to normal. I'm trying to get you to the supernatural. Okay, all right. Y'all gonna make me work hard today. Huh? That the problem is we're trying to get back to normal. I just wanna get back to my pew. Because my granddaddy bought my pew and he paid for it. I want to just get back. I don't feel like I'm in the spirit unless I'm in the sanctuary. Well, that's your problem. You've limited the presence of God to the four walls of the building when the spirit's been in your bedroom the whole time. 
all through the pandemic. He's been trying to speak to you, but you had Netflix on so loud that he couldn't speak a new word in your life. You overdosed. Can I preach it like I feel it? You overdosed on getting out and associating because you're isolated from people. And the Holy Ghost is sitting there saying, but I'm isolated from you because you won't pay me any attention because you're trying to connect to everybody else. It's become rote. It's become mechanical. It's become automatic. And let's be real today. Most of our worship lives are not intentional. They are mechanical. So when you are told, when, when you are encouraged from the preacher, do your devotion, you read your little, your little, you know, you know, your little devotional, your two, three paragraphs, you turn to a text, you read that, you get up and then worry. You get down, roll out of the bed, get down on your knees because mama told you to pray before you do anything else. You say a little prayer and truth be honest, because this has happened to me. Look, y'all looking like this didn't happen to you. So let me testify. Can I testify? You get down on your knees, you start praying. And in the middle of the prayer, you start drifting towards bills and what the children are doing and what you're going to do on the job. You're not, so, so, so now you ain't even talking to Jehovah. Now it's all about what you're worrying about when God has already figured it out. It becomes mechanical. It becomes automatic. Please, Holy Ghost, help them to hear what you want them to hear today. And the problem is our worship is like singing the same old song. And could it be that every time we do the same routine, every time we pray the same pitiful prayer, Every time we read the same amount of verses when the Holy Ghost pushed you to read more, but you didn't have no more time. Could it be every time you do the same thing, God is saying, not that song again. Not that, not that same worship again. Not, you praying that same prayer again? You've been praying that prayer for 10 years. I think God, and I'm in the Bible, I'm going to show you. I think sometimes when it comes to our worship of him, God says, not that song again. I'm going to answer your prayers because that's who I am. I'm going to keep loving you, but I don't want that worship again. Y'all looking at me like I'm just making this up. Look at verse 10. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Because God may be tired of your same old testimony. All right, let me, let me work this and get out your way. Because it's my anniversary. It's my anniversary weekend. I can't be here all day. All right, watch this. Watch this. So the prophet says, chapter 42, verse 10, sing unto the Lord a new song. Here's what I want you to understand. If you're going to sing a new song... Song is not just a song. It's a new worship. It's a new level of devotion to Jesus. It's a new focus on God. If you're going to give God and sing unto him a new song, here it is. First thing is you, it requires your attention. Somebody shout attention. Somebody say it again, attention. Put it in the chat, attention. It requires your attention. Hear this. You've got to pay attention to your worship. In the passage, verse 9, he says, Behold, the former things are come to pass. Many of our worship routines have become rote because they are solely rooted in our memory of what God has done. Ah, oh God, huh? I, I, I want you to stay here. This is so simple, but it's so profound. Many of our worship routines have become rote because they are solely rooted in our memory of what God has done. So our worship is stuck on what God has done. And when our worship routine is rooted only in what he's already completed, we then sing the same old song quote the old Bible text, same old cliches. 
And see now, in black church, the conventional way the preacher would go right here is you ought to praise him for what he's already done. And we can get, we can get happy on that, right? Praise him for what he's already, he's already opened doors. He's already made a way. I, I, I could go there, but let me push you a little deeper. Because while we praise him for what he's done, for too many of us, our praise is held prisoner by our past blessings. That's why your worship is devoid of passion, devoid of energy, can even be boring, monotonous. You made a monument of a moment and got stuck there. And your worship does not yet now reveal what God has done for you lately. Okay, yeah. So a lot of our worship has become stagnant because it's rooted in a memory rather than in our present reality. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, so, so let me illustrate what I mean. One of my favorite songs I like to sing um, is X Factor by Lauryn Hill. One of my favorite songs, all right? One of my favorite songs, Lauren. So, so, and I love the whole album. But as I listen to X Factor and I've been listening to ever since it came out, X Factor, one, one of the lyrics of that is, it could all be so simple. You, you, you remember that? Don't sing it, you in church. But you rather make it hard. I see you, Chris. You all sing with me. Loving you is like a battle. And we both end up with scars. All right? One of my favorite songs. It's basically a breakup song, right? And like any favorite song, it's rooted, don't miss this, in a memory of a breakup in the past. So I'm singing the song one day. I don't know if Steph remembers this years and years ago. I'm singing those lyrics, and she says, Steph says, have I hurt you that bad? I said, oh, no, baby. No, baby, I'm just singing the song. You haven't, you haven't, you, I didn't even realize what I was saying. Watch what she said. She said, well, baby, you need to sing another song because that song doesn't reflect what's going on up in here. Y'all, y'all better not miss your shout at home. I think they got it in the building. Some of y'all are singing breakup songs to Jesus, and he said, I woke you up this morning. Some of the praises that you're singing are based on a past. See, X Factor was rooted in a memory of a painful breakup. Why was I singing that in the midst of a happy marriage? And I'm trying to figure out why are you singing the same songs based on what God did for you 10 years ago, 5 years ago, last year, when God did some things last night, when God did some things last week, when God did some things this morning. You got to give him praise. That's why it says new mercies every morning. New mercies, new songs. Can I push it a little bit further? Here's the problem with the church. And I'm not a prophet, nor the son of a prophet, but, but I do want to prophesy this today. Um, that uh, one of the greatest challenges of churches in this next year to come, hear me, you're going to see it unfold, is that churches are going to struggle because they are so rooted in pre-COVID ministry that they will not know how to deal with post-COVID reality. You better preach, Holy Ghost. I used to go to camp meeting. Huh? Um, and uh, huh? old school, you know, black camp meeting, sweat camp meeting. Sweat under your armpits. You know what I'm talking about, David? Yeah, yeah, camp meeting. And uh, when you go to camp meeting, you going to praise God, but you going to leave musty. You, you, you know, camp meeting. And, and one of the sad songs they would sing is somebody would get up, some old elder from some country church, and he would sing, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. And I'm sitting there saying, oh, not this song again. And the reason I'm saying that is because I want you to hear this. Churches are going to struggle. Some of us are going to struggle because we take the words of that song and apply it to what God is doing now. I want you to think about this. An anchor keeps you in place. 
And maybe the problem with our worship is that our souls have been anchored. <laughs> I just messed somebody's theology up right there. Huh? Maybe your problem is your worship is anchored. Your praise is anchored. Mm, your, your, your understanding of who God is is anchored. Uh, the author, R.T. Kendall, once wrote, y'all better hear this, sometimes the greatest opposition to what God wants to do next comes from those on the cutting edge of what God did last. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah, I got to rewind that. Sometimes the greatest opposition to what God wants to do next comes from those on the cutting edge of what God did last. Do you understand that sometimes we stand in the way of what God is getting ready to do, of what God is doing, because we are anchored in what we did last time. Let me go deeper. At one point, do you know gathering in a building for corporate worship as the church was cutting edge? Read the Gospels, you'll discover in the book of Acts, they didn't own no building where they could come together and worship. They were worshiping in caves and in houses and any place they could be. That's why on the day of Pentecost, they're hiding up in an upper room. That was cutting edge. Cutting edge. But, cut, but that's not cutting edge anymore. And if we were to make the argument that the only way the church can grow is to be back in a building, we are standing in the way of what God is about to do. Passing the offering plate was once cutting edge. Read your Bible, you'll discover the way they took offerings was they had to send, Paul had to send people out to different households to pick up the offering. When you were in church, at some point, somebody says, you know what we're going to do? We ain't going to go to nobody's house. We're just going to bring them to this place and pass the offering. But now passing the offering plate is not cutting edge. I'm going to tell y'all right now, I don't think we're ever going back to passing the offering plate. Y'all have shown me you can give more online than you could ever put into an offering plate. I'm going to get in trouble right here. Somebody's going to be mad. Don't email me. Holding Sabbath school on Sabbath morning with printed lessons was once cutting edge. Before there was a printer, before they could print on papers, they were gathering together and doing Bible study. And when somebody came up with Sabbath school, they were like, oh, by the way, by the way, we didn't make that up. We got it from Sunday school. But that's a whole other sermon. But when we got our printed Sabbath school lessons, somebody was like, Eureka, this is cutting edge. My wife knows where I'm going. <laughs> but now we got small groups that meet virtually so that you can still connect with people. The problem is, here it is, don't miss the point. Your problem is your worship might be anchored. However, I would suggest you trade your anchor in for a sale. Sales keep me, I mean, anchors keep me in my place. But a sail, don't miss your shout, is designed to catch the wind to propel me forward. And can I tell you, Revision, in 2022, there's one thing our church is going to do. We're going to come and take up that anchor, put up our sail, and let the, blow, let the wind blow and follow where the Spirit leads. You got to pay attention to see, is my worship rooted in a past where God has moved me into a future? Second thing, I can't stay too long. The new song that you can sing, this new level of worship requires intention. Not only attention, but intention. Watch, it's right there in verse 9. God says, new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Our worship needs to be intentional, even though it is part of our routine. 
And God is telling them, and he's telling us, that he is a going to reveal. In fact, this is a messianic passage, which talks about Jesus coming with new deliverance. And we've got to be intentional to know that if God is doing something new and we are in a new season, our worship should match that. All right. Uh, tomorrow, on the 19th, is our 22nd year wedding anniversary. Can y'all tell I'm excited? Yeah. And every year, my wife and I celebrate our wedding anniversary. It commemorates our commitment. It is indeed a routine, a habit, a practice rooted in meaning and value. I don't skip a year. Husbands, you're going to get in trouble if you do. I don't skip a year because it's a routine. And the routine helps us to be sustained in our relationship. I want you to understand, if every year I gave Stephanie flowers, she's not going to feel cherished. If every year I take her to the same restaurant and order the same things, she is not going to be happy. If every year I wear the same outfit, she is not going to feel special. If every year, hold on, I whisper the same sweet somethings in her ear, she might not be turned on. How many of you know just because it's another year doesn't mean you do what you did last year? I see you, Belinda and Jack. Just because it's another year doesn't, you, you, doesn't mean you just say, girl, you know I love you, and you don't do nothing special. Every now and again, I got to change it up. Every now and again, Jordan, I got to mix it up. Every now and again, I got to plan new stuff. Every now and again, I got to do new things, try new things. Watch this. I got the same wife but greater love this year than I had last year. Y'all missing your shout. Same wife, but we've been through some things since last year. Same wife, but I've learned some things about her and learned some things about me and we've grown in holy matrimony. Don't you miss your shout. You are serving the same God. But you learned some things this year that you didn't know last year. Same God. But he's done some new things for you this year that he didn't do yesteryear. Same God. But he opened some doors that were closed last year. You better stop right now online. You better stop right now in this building and give God an anniversary praise. <laughs> God, it's been a while, huh? but I want to thank you for everything I've learned this year, every way I've grown this year, everything you supplied this year, everything you detracted this year, everything you added this year. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, huh? Let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. Because huh? uh, some of y'all, y'all didn't catch this. So let, me do, let me do it for the other crowd. Some of y'all won't get this. But let me quote the gospel according to Fat Joe. <laughs> Jimmy, I don't know if you know. <laughs> let me quote the gospel according to Fat Joe. Fat Joe helps us to understand. If you don't know, he's a rapper. Uh, Fat Joe helps us to understand what it is to take our worship to the next level. He said, when talking about the verses between the locks and dip Said, he said, uh, yesterday's price is not today's price. Let me say it like he said it again. Yesterday's price is not today. You missing your shot. See, you can't give yesterday's praise because it's not today's blessings. And how many of you know that you got to give God fresh praise, fresh hallelujah, fresh focus? Fresh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Not for last year. Hallelujah for now. Yesterday's price ain't today's price. Last thing, I'm going to let you go because I got to go. It's my anniversary. All right. New song, last thing requires not only attention, not only intention, but revelation. Huh, huh. Verse 9 and 10. We read that. It says, before they spring forth, it's in verse 9, before they spring forth, 
I tell you of them. I want you to understand God sets up the reason for why we ought to sing a new song and stop singing the same old song, give it the same old praise. He says, before they spring forth, before the things I have in my mind to do, I will tell you of them. God says before they happen, you'll know. This is revelation. God reveals that what will happen, God reveals what will happen before it happens. God was asking them, watch this, to sing a new song based on the revelation that the new deliverer was on his way. I told you, this is a messianic chapter. Ah, somebody, I heard somebody got it in the building. It's a messianic chapter. It is, it is a, a prophecy about the fact that Jesus will one day come. Now understand, they were told to sing a new song about a coming Messiah that hadn't arrived yet. It was hard to sing a new song in their day because they were in Babylonian captivity. They were stolen and taken from their native land. They, they were exploited and broken. And they were used to singing, watch this, the old songs of Zion because they reminded them of pre-captivity days. You just missed it. And yet God was telling them, stop singing about where I had you. I want you to sing a new song for where you are. But ex existentially, they were probably saying, but God, how can we do that? Because there is nothing around us that suggests to us that we ought to praise you. <laughs> and you got to understand, we like them have a hard time doing this. Because we like them still live in human captivity through sex trade and human trafficking. We still live in a country that does not respect the dignity of black human beings having stolen us from the shores of Africa. We still live in a time when poor people are exploited. I don't hear nobody. Women are subjugated. Immigrants are disregarded. Prisoners are dehumanized. Children are molested. Families are decimated. And believers are devastated. And yet, ah, thank you Jesus, God tells us to sing a new song. Why? Because deliverance is on the way. Why? Because trouble won't last always. Why? Because evil is about to see its last day. Why? Because unrighteousness is going to be turned upside down. Why? Because things are about to change for you. As I go to my seat, preacher, she started telling us one day about her experience with bullies. One of my colleagues in pastoral ministry shared a story about when she was bullied by some girls in her elementary school. During recess, they would tease her and call her names like four eyes because her glasses were too big for her little face. And she would cry. During lunch, these same girls would take food items off of her tray and throw it around the cafeteria. And she would plead for them to stop. After school, these girls would snatch her book bag off her back and, and, and begin to unpack uh, the items in her book bag in the garbage. She would protest and complain. She said, but one day, the preacher told me, after school, when they snatched her book bag from her and started unpacking its contents in the garbage, she didn't protest this time. She didn't complain. She said she watched as their faces were in amazement because she didn't cry. She said she started humming a song she heard her mother sing. She didn't know all the words. It was a Hawkins song, an old gospel song. But the part she remembered, she began to hum and sing, it won't be long. They kept on messing with her, but she kept singing, it won't be long. She said in recollection, she doesn't know why the spirit brought that to her young little mind, but she kept singing as they were emptying her contents into the garbage, it won't be long. Until around the corner arrived her big brother with a stern look, looking down on the girls that it looked so big to her. And the older brother said, I've heard you've been messing with my sister. He said, don't let me drive over here again. He said, next time, I'm not coming to talk. Then he turns around to his sister and says, get your bag. 
daddy told me to bring you home. You just missed your shout. What happened is, is that when you are in the midst of being bullied by this world, bullied by your bills, bullied by worries and complaints, you better start singing. It won't be long because your older brother is coming. And when he comes, everything and everyone that was against you, he'll say, I heard you've been messing with my child. Don't make me have to come back here because when I come back, I'm not coming back to talk. And then he'll turn to you and say, by the way, daddy told me to take you home. Is there anybody here that's glad today? Hallelujah. Oh, that's glad today. Thank you, Jesus. That if you just start singing a new song, everything around you have to change. Because he that shall come will come and shall not tarry. Is there anybody here who's grateful for Jesus? Is there anybody here who believes he's coming again? Is there anybody know that your older brother is coming round the corner? And when he comes, your trouble is over. So give him a praise. I, I said give him a praise. I didn't say clap for me. I said give him a praise. Give him a it won't be long praise. Hallelujah. Put it in the chat. It won't be long. That's why I can sing a new song. Because all of this is going to change. I, I asked the praise team to come because they're going to lead us in one more song. Because I want you to get this. I, I want you to get this. And I might just hang out with you. I'm going to be with the praise team today. I might just hang out with you. Listen, I want you, I want everybody, even if you're at home, stand if you can where you are. And those of you in the building, stand. We're going to give him praise. Understand, new song doesn't mean you can't sing an old song that moves you. New song literally means a new level of worship, a new level of focus. I'm going to think about what I'm singing about. I'm going to let it move me. I'm not going to wait for the praise team to move me. I'm going to sing until my spirit feels it. Come on, I want you to join us. It's an old song. Say, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, everybody. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, yeah, come on. Praise him. From the rising of the sun. That's when you got up this morning.
want you to say his name, Jesus. We said that name is beautiful, call it Jesus. Come on, say it, say it, Jesus. Speak his wonderful name. Yeah, 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 come on, say Jesus. He put food on your table. He kept clothes on your back. Come on, call his name, Jesus. Call it Jesus. Man, a way out of no way. Helps you carry your burden. You say, hey, when you thought you were gonna lose your mind, come on, call his name, call his name, call his name, hallelujah, Jesus, bless his name. sing a new song, a new level of worship with attention, with intention based on the revelation that Jesus is soon to return. I ain't going back to normal. I'm going forward to supernatural. I want to see things I've never seen before. I want to get into his presence and say, God, I don't want to leave. A theologian said this week, he said, I don't want to pray and then go to the office. I want my office to be prayer. I want for you as your pastor, I want for you as the under shepherd who follows the good shepherd, that you will sing a new song. Hear me, if your worship routine is the same it was 10 years ago, something's wrong. If when you read the scripture, I know it doesn't move you every time. We're human beings, finite as we are, but every now and again, you ought to have to read that scripture a few times to get what God is saying. Sing a new song unto the Lord. If you're here today, you want to give your life to Jesus. If you're online and you're watching, you want to give your life to Jesus. You want this joy that emanates from believers who know he's able. I invite you right on the screen on your television screen is coming I believe the QR code just open up your phone app don't take a picture just zoom in on the, on the code it'll open up and you can answer the appeal you want special prayer you can do it there you want to join our church you can do it there you want to give your life to Jesus and study to be baptized to be a follower disciple of Jesus you can do it there if you're in the building you can do the same thing. QR code is right behind me on the screen. We're going to, we know it's COVID, we want to minimize contact. But if you want to give your life to Jesus or you're saying, I'm tired of just jumping around to different broadcasts or different churches. I want to be rooted and grounded so I can then put up my sail and follow Jesus wherever this church is going. You want to be part of us. We invite you to come. I want to pray a prayer for those of you who are making decisions even now. And I believe it's happening right now. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. We thank you, God, that you enable us to sing new songs based on new experiences. You're the same God, but you deserve fresh praise. So God, may this new, new year, as we have all these lists of things that we want to do, at the top of it, may it be that our worship life will go to another level. Not just what we do in the morning, but what we do all day. I pray, God, that you will cause us with attention and intention, believing your revelation, to give you total praise. That means, God, every decision, may it be an act of worship. Every person we date, may it be an act of worship. The way that we spend our money, may it be an act of worship. The way that we spend our time, may it be an act of worship. God, help us to sing new songs for new mercies. 
thank you. Seal every decision in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. If God's spoken to your heart today, put your hands together and bless his name. Stay by. Pastor Houston's going to come. He's going to lead us in worship through giving. You may be seated. Those of you who are watching online, online stay with us. We want to make sure that we give you the opportunity. And let me say in advance, thank you for your giving. Next week, we're going to talk about what you've done this year in giving. It's been remarkable. Shows your love for Jesus, your love for this church, and your faithfulness. May God bless you as you give today. here in person. Our QR code is right there on the screen. I shared earlier that you don't have to take a picture of the QR code. All you have to do is just open up your cell phones and just go to your camera, zoom in on it, and you can be able to get the QR code that way. A link will pop up, which will lead you to our various giving platforms. If you're online, you can also give via our QR code as well. But if you also want to give via our old method, you can. You can go to our website at Revision Church Atlanta. Dot org and click on our give tab which would then lead you to Adventist online giving or you can give via our cash app all you have to do is type in dollar sign revision church into our cash app or you can give via our PayPal for those of you who are online all you have to do is text rev PayPal to the number there on the screen as Pastor Knight said we appreciate each and every single one of you all for your continual giving and you all giving each and every single week Listen, as Pastor Knight, he shared many times throughout his sermon, but it's his and our First Lady's anniversary this weekend. Come on, let's give him a round of applause. We want to let our pastor and First Lady know that we appreciate you all and we wish you many, many, many more anniversaries. We also want to let you all know that as you're leaving, stop by our small group table. The first three people to sign up to be a small group leader this upcoming semester, you will receive a gift card. So go ahead and stop by our small group table. Jessica, our small group leader, she'll be there. She'll be able to talk to you about all, what all that entails. So we encourage you to stop by. Were you all blessed here today? Oh, come on, I said, were you all blessed here today? Amen, amen. Let's stand for closing prayer. Let's pray. God, we're just so grateful for your grace and your love. And God, we're so thankful for the word that we hear heard here today and God we pray that we would keep a new song on our heart this is our prayer in Jesus name amen you all are dismissed have a wonderful Sabbath stay safe and see you on online next week <laughs>